Hello, everyone. Uh, so just picking off where where Devon left this, um, I'm just going to go very quickly through what our overall approach to data analysis is. Um, some some of you might have been to previous webinars in the past, and you might have seen this uh, before. Uh, but basically, what we do is we receive your housing benefit or council tax data. We take that all together, we clean it up a bit like uh, Devon was saying before, and we then run it through the the engine that we have that's behind the universal benefit calculator and that models uh, basically the entire welfare system of the United Kingdom. Once that is done, it allows us to give you incredible insights into the data that you have, and also, it allows, you, it allows us to go down to the household level and see which specific households are affected by which reforms and how, a bit like the slide we saw before. So what I'm going to do now is show you an example of uh, the kind of data set that we give to our clients at the end of these projects. And I think this is going to be a lot, this is going to be very helpful when it comes to understanding what it is that you can do after our analysis. Uh, so this is an example of a data set. So let's imagine that we've finished uh, doing all the analysis work for you. Uh, we've delivered a report and you have a general understanding of how welfare reform affects your local authority. What this household does is it allows you to look at the household level and see how those effects will, will apply to individual households. So it probably looks a bit overwhelming at first sight. There are lots and lots of columns and lots and lots of rows. I think this example data set contains about 40, 43,000 uh, different households. So it's basically every single household that's receiving housing benefits or council tax support in your local authority. Now, what we do here is we, we break down the situation of, the, of each specific household. So if we go from left to right, you will see that we have a reference field for each household. This is essentially the housing benefit reference number that you can then uh, use to match against the, uh, your own records. We have a postcode. These are all example postcodes and example reference numbers. Uh, but of course, if you have the postcodes of the people affected by different reforms, you can look at the regional level and how people in a specific postcode area will be affected by different reforms. And we do the same with wards as well. If you have that data, uh, you may find out that in this case, ward number six is going to be more negatively affected than any other wards. And then for each one of these households, we just give you a bit of very basic information so that you can more or less figure out what, what kind of households you're dealing with. So are there any children in this household and how many? Um, what about non-dependents? How many non-dependents are there in this household? We see that mostly it's zero. We have one non-dependent here and there. Earnings as well. So this will tell you the weekly earnings of each household. And you'll see that most of them tend to, tend to be out of work, but there are uh, quite a few households with earnings here. Household types. So this is where you can understand whether you're dealing with single people, lone parents, uh, couples with or without children. And again, you can also figure out if you're dealing with working age people or pensioners. There's a bit more information here on the tenure of each uh, tenant or of each household. So you might want to approach council tenants and private tenants in different ways. Owner occupiers, as well, of course, have their own uh, specific problems in, in terms of welfare reform. And we also have flags for uh, people living in bed and breakfasts, temporary accommodation and so on. Uh, which of course are very specific, very special cases. And finally, we also tell you the savings that each household has. In most cases, you'll see that the savings are very low, uh, but there are some cases where, where you'll find people with more than £6,000 saved up. And the economic status of each household, this means that they're either in work and not in work. And if they're not in work, then uh, maybe there is a, an obvious reason for that. Maybe they're disabled or have caring responsibilities. Following that, what we do is look at the reforms that have been implemented to date. So reforms up to and including 2015. And you'll see here that it's, it's relatively straightforward. So we have a column for the under occupation charge. 
uh, applies to social tenants. This is a simple yes, no column. And we also tell you if they are affected, how much by. So if you scroll down a bit, here we go. This household is affected by the under occupation charge and they're losing £21.42 every week due to this reform. And we also, wherever possible, add other columns such as this one here, which tells you that a specific household is affected by the under occupation charge, but it also seems that they're of pension age. And of course, pensioners should be exempt from this reform. In many cases, this is due to the DWP being a bit slow, uh, except, exempting people when they've just turned a uh, pension age. In other cases, it could be that the DWP is unaware of this and you can actually inform them and they will exempt this household as they should. In any case, when we find specific examples like those, we flag them in a, in a column, in a separate column, and then you can take a look at them and, and decide what you can do about it. We do the same for other reforms. So the LHA cap again, we give you a yes and no column. And if the household is affected, we tell you how much by. And again, we do the same with the benefit cap. This is the, the original benefit cap at 26,000 pounds, the amount people lose. And a few more columns that can be helpful. So for example, in this one here, we let you know of any households that are affected by the benefit cap, but are also carers. And we know that the government intends to exempt carers from the benefit cap, but they haven't yet. So this is a good one to bear in mind uh, once legislation is implemented to exempt carers from the cap. We also add a column for households with children that could be eligible to free school meals. This is another important one because you might not always be aware of which children can receive free school meals and which children are receiving them. And if the household is earning below the national minimum wage, we flag this one as well because it could be that you want to understand uh, what is going on with that household and whether the employer is doing something wrong. Then we look at uh, future reforms. So this is what we call the reforms after 2016. You'll see that we have a, a column here for the lower benefit cap. This can be uh, £23,000 in London or £20,000 elsewhere. And of course, we tell you the amount that households are likely to lose from this reform. And if there is a carer in the household so that you can approach them as necessary. If the household is children and it's likely to lose tax credits if they have any more children or if they make a new claim, that is flagged here as well. So it's a yes, no uh, column that you can take into account. Then we move over to the reforms that will be implemented after 2017. So any young people with uh, housing at risk who will not automatically be entitled to housing support in the UC or households that will be expected to earn or learn. And any households that have a risk of losing their work-related activity group premium under ESA, households that will have to pay to stay if they earn too much um, and live in socially rented properties. So all of those you have here. If when the LHA cap is applied to social rents, uh, households in this, in this local authority are going to be affected by that. We flag them here. So here we have an example of a social uh, property with relatively high rent that is above the LHA rate. And we know that after 2018, this household could be affected. But of course, since this only applies to new uh, tenancies after uh, 2016, I believe it is, uh, this, is not this does not necessarily mean that the household will be affected, but it could be. And finally, we just move on to a section for universal credit. And here we try to give you very in-depth information on whether non-dependent deductions under UC will be higher or lower for this household, whether the household will be affected by the lower work, work allowances uh, that were introduced a few, a few weeks ago, and of course the amount that this household will lose from the lower work allowances. Other things like in-work conditionality or the minimum income floor, those are in there as well. And of course, the key one that you really care about, which is, is this household going to need transitional protection when they move on to UC? And if they will, like this household here, we tell you how much they will need. 
So how much worse off could they potentially be if they lose transitional protection? We also look at a few uh, mitigating measures, so the living wage increase and the reduction in the income tax threshold. You can figure out which households are going to benefit from that, mostly because they're, uh, they're earning and they're going to earn more or keep more of their earnings. And we finally uh, bring it all together. So this is the section on the overall impact. And for each household, we can tell you the combined impact of all of the welfare reforms up to 2015 was this much per week, so £34.15 per week, which we class as being high. In many other cases, the impact will be none, or it will be medium, or it will be low. And we do the same for all of the reforms to date, plus the lower benefit cap. And in some cases, of course, the reduction is going to increase because they'll be affected by the lower benefit cap. So you'll notice that there are more, more households with a high impact in 2016. We also have a section on barriers to work, and this is our understanding of how difficult it would be for this household to move into employment, either because they have a disability or caring responsibilities or their lone parent. And we tell you for each household, the combined barriers to work are either low, medium or high. And finally, if you have any other data, for example, on rent arrears or DHP applications, we can add that here. So you can see that for each household, they could have arrears or they could not have arrears. They may have applied for a DHP and had the application rejected or approved, or maybe they didn't apply at all. And of course, what you care about is what this looks like in practice. So I'm just going to give you a very quick example of how you can use all of these different flags and, uh, and markers and filter throughout the whole population. So I said that we have about 40,000 households in this example uh, data set, which of course is a very large number of households and it's probably very hard to deal with so many people. So let's imagine that you're particularly worried by the lower benefit cap that's going to be introduced in October. So we can move across to the section for the reforms in 2016. And in there we have the marker for the lower benefit cap, in this case at £23,000. So if we click in the arrow here, you'll see that you can filter out all of the households that will not be affected, all of the households with a no on there. And that's reduced the number of households. We're now down to 1,126 households that will be affected by the lower benefit cap, which is a much more manageable number. But it could be that you really want to target a very small number of households uh, to put all of your support behind them and try to support them out of uh, the lower benefit cap. Well, in that case, what you can do is look at the amount that these households are going to lose from the benefit cap. So again, if I click on the arrow, I can do a number filter, for example, and I ask the system to show me only the top 100 households ordered by the amount that they will lose from the benefit cap. And you'll see that here we have households that are going to lose hundreds of pounds every week from the lower benefit cap. So these are households that are really, really going to need uh, support from October onwards. And you'll see that by doing this, we've brought the number down to 100, so it's a lot more manageable. And maybe we could try to figure out what we can do about these households. Do we want to see if we can support them into work? Or is that going to be difficult because they're mostly disabled or carers and so on? Well, if we move all the way to the right, here we have the barriers to work. And if I look at the column for barriers to work, it looks like there are quite a few households with high or medium barriers. But let's say that I only want to see those with low barriers to work. So these are people with no caring responsibilities, no disability, no young children. It's brought it down to 26 households, which is a relatively small number. But ideally, this means that here you have 26 households whom you can support into work and if they work enough hours, of course, they will be completely exempt from the benefit cap and not lose hundreds of pounds a week. Or it could be that you want to look only at those households with high barriers to work, the ones that you can't really support into work. Well, in this case, again, the number is relatively small. It's just 46 households. And it could be that you want to understand whether they've applied for DHPs in the past, whether they've had applications rejected and why and so on. 
this is the kind of analysis that you can do with this data set, uh, which shows that looking at the household level with this is amazingly, uh, amazingly powerful. And then, of course, there are other things you can do. I'll, I'll just give you another quick example. I mentioned the column here for households that could receive free school meals. And of course, we know that there, there's the pupil premium in place in England, which means that uh, there's support from the central government for households, for children that receive free school meals. Well, in that case, you can ask the system to show you only households that can receive universal free school meals. And we see here that there's about 2,500. And out of those, you can figure out also matching against your own systems how many of these households actually are receiving free school meals. And if there are some that are not, then you could ask them to apply for free school meals and the pupil premium uh, should be paid by the central government. This is a very clear cashable return uh, that you can obtain from the data. So these are just two very quick examples of what you can do with the data. Um, of course, if you have any questions about other things you can do, uh, feel free to ask. And then finally, the other thing I'll say is that in addition to these data sets, we also tend to produce maps that may help you to show the effects of welfare reform a bit more visually, uh, for example, if you want to present to, to members. And here you have just the depth of the analysis. So you'll see that we do work at the national level. And here you see a breakdown of different regions, uh, depending on how affected they are by the current benefit cap how affected they will be by the lower benefit cap. Then we can zoom in on the ward and say, for example, for the London Borough of Hounslow, how many households will be affected by the cap in each specific ward. And we can even go into wards and look at different neighborhoods, how many households in each neighborhood within a ward will be affected. And if you really want to see specific households, we can put them at the street level. So you can go back to Mrs. Uh, forgotten name, Mrs. Biggins, and you can see exactly where she lives and which street she lives in. And it could be that there's a particular street where many people are affected by the cap. Uh, you may want to send an advisor to that street to talk to people at their homes. So that's enough from me. I'm going to hand this back to Devon so he can uh, wrap up the presentation and answer any questions that you may have.